Welcome, 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 beautiful Paris Saint Germain family. In today's video, we're going through the entire Paris Saint Germain versus Arsenal game. After re watching the entire game, I, I saw so many flaws, so many stuff we need to work on, and you know, some stuff that Arsenal did good at. And that's what we're going to take a look in this video. So it's a complete tactical analytical review of Paris Saint Germain versus Arsenal. Arsenal, obviously, this was their lineup. This is what was predicted. This is what we knew as fans. As, and Lucho knew as the manager coming into this game. Paris Saint-Germain, obviously, the first main thing was Dembélé not being picked for the entire squad. Luis Enrique already putting us at a disadvantage before the game started because, you know, that's how he feels. That's what he wants to do. He didn't feel this game was important enough to have a player of Dembélé's caliber. Then, obviously, starting Due instead of starting Colomani. Another questionable decision by Luis Enrique heading into the game. And Paris Saint-Germain, this is what we tried to do with the ball. Obviously, Arsenal were pressing us really high up the entire time. And as soon as Dona got it, gave it to Pacho. Pacho, instead of trying to find one of the midfielders in the center, it was either the midfielders weren't showing themselves or Pacho just isn't good enough on the ball. Gave it to Nuno and then Nuno had to create and progress the ball the entire game by himself. And he just didn't work out. Here he's putting a long ball to Barcola. Barcola loses it. Here it's Nuno once again to Barcola. Barcola loses it. Here... It's once again Pacho. Pacho puts a long ball to absolutely nobody. Nuno once again to Barcola. So Paris Saint Germain were always trying to find the outlet, especially on that left hand side. We didn't play that much on the right hand side with Dembele missing and Dewey not being that good and Warren as well. But yeah, we couldn't get a single ball through the entire left side for the majority of that first half. And it was it was unacceptable to watch. It was unacceptable from the players. Like Nuno Mendes has to do better. He can potentially beat his marker in Bukayo Saka and use that space. And Bradley Barcola has to do so much better. It was a disaster class from Bradley Barcola, if we're being honest. And sometimes we try to go for long balls from Donnarumma. <laughs> Dona here, do against Califiore. Dona again, it was Kangi Lee versus Gabriel. Pacho here gives it to Kangi Lee. And this was the first time PSG did something. That's when Arsenal aren't just like mid press. They aren't really pressing as high, but they're still having players high up the pitch. Pacho finds Kangi Lee. Kangi Lee beautifully to Baradli Barcola. And here you're like, Paris Saint Germain need to take this chance. Bradley Barcola goes closer, goes closer, and tries uh, like a skill move, thinking he's in the streets of Paris. This is a UCL game away at the Emirates against Arsenal. You cannot be doing stuff like this, Barcola. You have to be more direct. And he just wasted all time. And what a disaster full of a performance. Zero shots, one key pass, two out of six dribbles completed, zero out of crosses completed, three out of ten duels won, and zero out of two long balls completed. It was just, didn't do anything right in today's game, Bradley Barcola. And when PSG did something, it was some kind of magic. Nuno finding Barcola. But again, this is not what we should be doing. Warren here to do it. Again, Arsenal in this like half press, players up, but not that organized of a press. Do it finds Hakimi here, and Hakimi, what a run. Gets the shot off, but it's a great save from David Raya. All the Arsenal players are back, and the attack was completely dead. PSG just couldn't create anything. And then when we just tried pressing a single bit, because we would come to our Paris Saint-Germain's bad pressing in today's game, we actually got the ball off, but then when Bradley Barcola gets it, instead of being direct, this is the fifth minute of the game. This is a huge opportunity. He tries to go inside of ba Saka instead. I don't understand it from Bradley Barcola. He looked so unconfident. His decision-making was horrible. His he, d he just didn't look like a killer like we've seen him so far this season where he sees goal, he only thinks of goal. He doesn't think of teammates, nothing of beating the man. He just thinks of scoring, the, putting the ball into the net. That's exactly what he did not do. And here, once again, Hakimi gets it. And you're like, oh, maybe this is a good opportunity? No, because the Arsenal players, fair play to them, they recovered extremely well. Very intense uh, team Arsenal are. And this was obviously when the press and. Here comes the first thing. This is something I don't blame on the players. This, once again, is on the manager. So Luis Enrique, head of the game, told the players, do not press the goalkeeper and barely press the two centre-backs when they have the ball. Why are we doing this? Why, why aren't we using our press? Why aren't we trying to force Arsenal to make mistakes defensively? Because as we saw, when we pressed them a bit, the defenders could potentially have lost the ball. I don't know why Lucha told them, do not press Raya. Oh my God, he's such a great uh, ball playing keeper. Do not press him. Because we could have potentially won the ball sometimes. Obviously, it would have led some Arsenal counterattacks, but we have to play high risk, high reward football. I don't understand this from Lucha. 
once again here and how easily they beat our press timber here just going through barcola like he's not there i don't understand it gabriel to califiore and the entire press is gone by and warren doesn't go into califiore for absolutely no reason i don't understand it so uh, the attackers weren't pressing enough and when arsenal got through like our three man I don't know, four-man attacking press. Our midfielders didn't go and try to intercept the ball. Gabriel here finding Trossard. Trossard just going inside. And once again, Arsenal are in the final third in Paris Saint-Germain's area. I don't understand this. Raya finds party. Look at the mid-press. He finds Timber. And the press is absolutely gone with five PSG players behind the ball. This is completely unacceptable from Luis Enrique. I have to put this on Luis Enrique. He was the one that told the players, do not press the goalkeeper. La, 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 la. Just some extremely weird stuff and this is actually what costed us gabriel here finds trossat trossas go pause do it tries to tackle but still goes pause between and marquinhos so hakimi as you can see he's on i think martinelli here pacho is on Havertz. nuno is on saka and you could say Warren should be getting onto Califiore here, or even Nevis could get to him so between and marquinhos one of them has to go on him none of them do it they just watch the ball. Marquinhos, you know, he's trying to stay in his system position, as Lucho has told him. Whereas Vitinha just goes there, doesn't do anything special. And Trossard obviously puts in the cross. Pacho makes a mistake, doesn't go into the ball. Donnarumma is too late, and it's 1-0 to Arsenal. So, so, one thing was how Arsenal went through our press so many easy times. And at the end, they got a goal from it. This was a mistake in Paris Saint-Germain's tactics that we did not press enough. Our midfielders didn't work hard enough and we didn't try to win the ball back or foul or do anything when they want past the press. I do not understand that. Kai Havertz with the goal. And then Arsenal, after scoring the first goal, after scoring the second goal, and in some periods of the first half, they set back in this like mid block to a deep block. And once again, PSG could not penetrate it. It was completely impossible. Saliba gives it to Partier, Partey to Trossard and immediately they went past our, I don't know what we're trying to do with the pressing. It's completely insanity. And this is obviously what led to the second goal because Trossard finds Saka. Nuno wins the ball, but then Nuno just goes into the challenge for some reason, takes down Saka and gives him a set piece this close. Isn't this something Lucha has told the players? Do not give them set pieces. Arsenal are good at set pieces. This is a free set piece that we gave away. Saka puts it in. Barcola messes up in the front post. And Dona just stands there doing absolutely nothing. Go like it's empty. It's complete disaster full from Paris Saint-Germain. And it's, and it's not a single player. It's every single player on the pitch. And it's not just the players. It's the manager himself. Because the tactics on progressing the ball and winning the ball high up just was extremely bad. He did not try to find another alternative. We didn't try to progress the ball through the center. We didn't barely try going through the right side, even though... That's where Arsenal's weak side was, with Califiore having a ba very bad game, despite Arsenal winning this game. And then when they sat back here, we could not get a single pass through their lines. It was legit disgusting. Saka here finding Trossard, good save from Donnarumma. So going into the second half, I was expecting some changes. I was expecting something from Luis Enrique, some tweaks, some adjustments. Obviously, Arsenal came out a bit more comfortable. They were 2-0 up. Their most important part was trying to keep a lead. So Arsenal in the second half, their main focus was not conceding a goal, whilst their main focus in the first half was scoring a goal. So they let off, they gave PSG more of the ball, they didn't press as high up, but that did not matter at the end of the day, because what PSG did was we pushed them back a bit into their own half, and then we did, you know, the usual Lucho U-shaped ball. Lucho U-shaped ball, we like to call it here Paris Saint-Germain. This is what we saw from Spain at the World Cup. As you can see, no penetrative passes, barely any passes and touches inside of the penalty box, all of them outside, basically just wasting the time and making it easier for Arsenal to win this game. But we still managed to get some few chances. Califiore here makes a mistake, Barcola gets it. Instead of going direct towards the goal, passes it here, bad pass, do it, can't intercept it, and then Hakimi tries something and misses the ball entirely. Then we tried spamming crosses against Arsenal, Kangi Liher, Califiore. 14 crosses we attempted, not a single one of them was headed with, from a PSG player. It was complete crazy. And then here, corner kick, could have gotten a Fugazi-esque goal here, because we usually never score from corners, João Neves gets to it, and... It was just not good enough. It was just not good enough for Paris Saint-Germain in this game. And Arsenal, as we all know, and obviously with the penalty decision from what I've heard, 
uh, it's that Saliba is the one that hits it onto Califiore's hand. And if your teammate does that, it's not a handball according to the rules. But looking at what Arsenal did, obviously Fabian here with the long shot and Kangi Lee here with the long shot. And Raya makes the mistake and then Kolomani here. What is he doing? Take the shot, take one touch and then shoot the ball. He was just dancing around. Warren here with the cross. We lose the cross, can't get leave with the cross, we don't win the cross. And then here towards the end, we try to have a cheeky chance, Kulmani to Barcola and Saliba is there to clear it. And then Arsenal, during this period, where their main focus was not scoring goal, they still, I would say, created more chances than us, or at least deadlier chances than us. Havers here to Martinelli, straight to Doni, luckily. Martinelli puts in a cross, Rice heads it down. Here, suicidal pass from Hakimi to João Neves, we lose it. Marquinhos clears it straight on Hakimi's body. Saka is there, gives it to Martinelli, takes the shot. It's a good save from Dona. And yeah, this is the first man I have to talk to. This is the first man I have to talk about because in previous seasons where we've had, you know, a team that isn't that systematical, that has more to do with how good the players are in the game, then you blame the players. But as we all know, ever since we've signed Luis Enrique, we've become the system team. Okay, and what happens is when we perform really well, it's thanks to Lucho. When we perform really bad, it's thanks to Lucho. It's that simple. He takes most of the credit when we win. He takes most of the credit when we lose. Today, he put us at, at a disadvantage before the game even started with the entire Dembele di diabolical situation. Starting Desiree Due, who has not been performing well enough in league and games in a big UCL game away, was another horrendous decision by Luis Enrique in this game. And tactically, he still hasn't fixed the main issue from last season, which is either progressing the ball through high press, as we saw against Newcastle last season, and penetrating deep blocks, as we saw in pretty much every single big game last season season so we're still in step one that's for me the main issue with this game and this performance if this happened last season we would have done as we did last season which was oh this is a new season this is a new manager this is a new squad let's take time let's have weight let's have patience but now it's gone over a year we have only drawn Neves and Pachas, the new players in the squad obviously this did do it but again once again that was Lucho's decision in this game but we're still in step one we're still having the same weaknesses we still have the same flaws we only had 0.27 xg in this game 0.4 compared to Arsenal 0.71 so Arsenal weren't even that good when it came to creating chances it was just they were extremely clinical for them for those two small chances in the first half, obviously, individual mistake cost us once again in the UCL. This is nothing new, obviously, but this is why I'm going away from this game, blaming every single player and Luis Enrique mainly for this defeat because, yeah, it was just not good enough. Donnarumma, my thoughts about him is that, yeah, I don't really know. It's way too many Champions League mistakes Donnarumma has made and... I don't know how I can feel confident going into big games as our goalkeeper. Nuno Mendes and Ashraf Hakimi, I like them a lot. Uh, I think one thing they can try to improve on is trying to beat the press themselves, which is beating their man through, I don't know, dribbling past him, making a 1-2 as we saw Nuno sometimes trying to do it, Hakimi as well, or make constant runs and, and midfielder drops to their spot instead. That is something Lucho can tweak into. Pacho and Marquinhos have to start progressing the ball through the center or to someone else. Marquinhos is just giving it to Pacho. Pacho gives it to Nuno. And then Nuno gets full responsibility on progressing the ball throughout the entire first half. That is unacceptable. They have to improve. Pacho is a new signing, so he's a player I can give time. He's young as well, and he has other strength. Whilst Marquinhos, our captain, he's experienced. He has absolutely no excuse. He has to do better. He has to do better. He has to do better. Talking about the midfield, the midfield in this game, they didn't want the ball. Maybe Juan Neves wanted a bit. Our midfield didn't want the ball. They didn't win the ball back enough. They didn't progress the ball back enough. They didn't, they didn't do anything special in this game at all. It was a horrible performance from the midfield and going up to the attack once again. Very disgusting. This did he do it. Kangi Lee, Bradley Barcola. I'm a bit happy with Kangi Lee, but none of them really could help us. When they got the ball, they lost it. Their main thing was when they eventually got the ball from one of our defenders or midfielders was to keep the ball and get the team up, but they couldn't do that. And when we came to chance creation, I know that Kangili have five key passes in this game, but 
a lot of them were from corners and some crosses and so on. Bradley Barcola and Desiridou really didn't do anything else in this game. So what I'm expecting, obviously, Desiridou should never be starting for PSG, especially in a UCL game. But what improvements I can find from Kangi Lee and Barcola, Kangi Lee just has to become better, <laughs> has to improve his performances, especially in the UCL. Second starter in the UCL at PSG and it's not looking good. And Bradley Barcola just has to, I don't know, fix his confidence if he can do that because it's not acceptable what we saw in this game. Here are the stat leaders from the game. Hakimi, most recoveries. Kangili, most key passes. Fouls from Pacho. Fouls drawn from Pacho. Passes into the final third from Joao Neves. Progressive passes received was Barcola. Crosses Kangili. Progressive passes. Joao Neves dribbles. Nuno, Vitina, Barcola. Text interceptions. Joao Neves, Nuno. Touches Joao Neves. Shot creating actions. Kangili. Passes. Joao Neves. Progressive carries. Hakimi. Shots marking is Hakimi. Joao Neves and Nuno. Our first games in the two first games in the UCL, one goal, two goals allowed, 2.5 XG to 0.9 XGA. So, I mean, 0.9 XGA is still that from open play, we are like semi decent at defending, but 2.5 XG is absolutely once again diabolical when you include that one of those two games was Gerona at home, who are garbage this season. We move into the Nice game. I'm hoping for a good performance. The best team should start. Uh, a great result as well. And then we'll go into international break because then tough fixtures will coming up. UCL games such as PSV and Atletico Madrid and Liga games such as Marseille and Arsenal. So this will be a huge uh, period coming up for Paris Saint-Germain. And we just have to recover from this defeat and improve. Uh, I think pressure should be on all PSG players and Luis Enrique. What happened versus Arsenal should never ever happen again it was completely unacceptable and i've seen so many fans trying to accept the defeat or trying to put it uh, under something and hide like it didn't happen no it happened it hurt we will remember this defeat for a while and i will not move away from it i will put the constant pressure on my manager luis enrique on my club on my president nasser khalifi on my sporting director luis campos and all phd players that this never happens again that's been it from your boy PSG. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tactical analytical review of PSG versus Arsenal. That's been it. And as usual, allez, allez, allez Paris.